I just turned it off. Okay. Uh, my part is pretty quick. Um, I'm a nutritionist, so I love food. And food is medicine. That's the reality. Food is medicine. So what I'm handing out to you is the recipes for a couple of things that you're going to be tasting. And that's the way I'm going to talk to you about alkalizing your diet. What's alkaline, what foods are alkaline, what foods are acidic. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you're on our email, and so we'll be sending out you know, the ex expanded version of this. But it's easier to kind of relate since you have a recipe and you can understand what I'm saying. We're born alkaline, okay? That's the bottom line. We are born alkaline. And from all of the reasons that you've heard, we become acidic. And the water's job in our body is to neutralize the acid. Okay? And we help that process by putting alkaline foods to help neutralize the acid from other foods. So it's kind of like 80-20. And some of you may have heard me talk about the 80-20 rule when it comes to eating healthy. So if you're doing what you should do 80% of the time, then that other 20%, the holidays, the birthdays, you know, those kind of things that come up, then, you know, our body can stand it. Same thing applies to alkaline, acidic foods coming into our body. 80% you want it to be alkaline, 20% acidic. So let's look at our recipe. Nut balls, nut balls. Now, I love this recipe, it's very tasty. Um, we've got pecans, almonds, raisins. Of the three, which one do you think is acidic? Well, the raisins come from grapes. Is grapes acidic? Well, grapes are alkaline. So that's not the acidic one. The pecans. The pecans are acidic. The almonds are alkaline. The raisins, because they come from grapes, they are also alkaline as well. Okay? So you're looking at your recipe, so you see, you know, you don't, it's a pretty good mix there. You know, you've got the a little bit of, of acidic, okay? You got your protein in your nuts. That's the biggest core question about getting rid of the meat. Oh, where am I getting my protein from? Well, you eat too much protein to begin with, but you know, that's a whole nother workshop. But, <laughs> but you can get the protein from, from, from your nuts, okay? Um, the fig nut balls, okay? Oh, uh, the coconut is acidic. And you're only using the coconut to roll in after you've, you've combined the nuts and the raisins. You can do this with a good blender, okay? Now, a food processor, you know, you say, well, that's a couple hundred dollars. Well, how much are you worth? How much, you, how, how much are you worth? So, but a good blender will, you'll be able to do these in a good blender, okay? All right, the fig nut balls. We've got walmond, wal walnuts, <laughs> walnuts, <laughs> almonds, and fig. So which one is the acidic? Walnuts. Walnuts is acidic. Almonds and the figs are alkaline. Okay, we already know about the coconut. And again, it's just putting all those ingredients in the blender, take them out, roll them into some balls, one tablespoon balls, and roll them in the coconut. You have got yourself a nice treat. A nice treat. Do you think like a type of binder or like an oil or like a coconut? You will be surprised when you take that scoop, that tablespoon of this mixture out start rolling it in your hand, you will be absolutely surprised at the amount of oil that you will see on your hands. You will be amazed. Those are the nut balls. Yes, these are what the nut balls look like. The darker ones are the fig. You want to pass those around? Don't take any out yet because it's not time to eat. <laughs> and um, now, I did one, and I didn't print this one because you're not sampling this today, but I'm working with some kids, and I absolutely love it, love what to be a says. We've got to start with the children. Uh, and we have nut sensitivities. So uh, there is a fruit ball that you can do. Raisins, cranberries, and coconuts. Same thing, put them in the blender, roll them, okay? You can have those handy to munch on. I mean, just really a, a, a great, great treat, okay? Uh, one of the salad dressings that you're going to be tasting is a vinaigrette, and it's made with sun, safflower oil, balsamic vinegar, organic balsamic vinegar, and garlic cloves. 
This is a little bit more acidic. This is why you only drizzle the dressing on your salad. You don't have salad with your dressing. You dress it with your salad, okay? So we've got um, more acid because we've had the vinegar and what? What other ingredients is acid? The oil. Any oil is going to be acidic, okay? The cloves are alkaline. So you can see from your recipes, and you can see the ratio, it's mostly, mostly acidic even in these few recipes. I'm going to uh, just read off a couple of other foods for you that are alkalizing foods. And again, it's about neutralizing the acid. That is the whole picture that we want to get in our brain in terms of our eating. So if we're talking about vegetables that we want to have uh, as alkalizing. We want asparagus. We want watercress, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, chard, collard greens. How about marinated greens? Has anyone tasted marinated greens? Now I'm going to tell you if you have not, this is a person, and I have to call her out, my friend here in the front, Ethelene, awesome gardener. Do you hear me? Awesome gardener. She got me hooked on the marinated greens thing. So much so that I did a YouTube clip showing you how to make the marinated greens. So if you go out to YouTube, the marinated greens recipe is out there for you to make. It's so easy to make and it's absolutely very, very tasty. I digress. Anyway. <laughs> okay, we got peas, peppers, pumpkins. What are the seeds called after they come out of the pumpkin? What's another name for them? Papitas. I just learned that a couple of weeks ago. I shared that with the kids too. Pumpkin seeds become pepitas when they come out of the pumpkin. Say that three times fast. Right? <laughs> okay, some of the fruit, and this is not an exhaustive list, but just to give you some ideas. A um, apples, apricots, avocados, bananas, cantaloupes, cherries, lemons, pears, peaches, pineapples, all the berries. We're talking about eating like a rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? Just, just think about all those colors, all those antioxidants that you're getting. Your protein, alkalizing foods, almonds, chestnuts, cottage cheese, eggs. We're not trying to get you to eat a whole lot of eggs, but sunflower seeds, squash seeds, all the seeds, tofu, tofu, okay? Um, you've got some spices like cinnamon and curry and ginger, sea salt that are also alkalizing. Apple cider, vinegar is alkalized, okay? Now, when it comes to acidic, from the protein side, Tabia talked about that meat, us letting go of that meat, beef, lamb, pork, rabbit, even salmon, and shrimp, and scallop, and tuna. Okay, uh-oh, uh-oh, okay. But again, think about that 80-20 rule, so that you know that you, you can, you want some salmon? That's in the 20, 20 category, right? Okay? All of your oils, even the good ones, the safflower, the canola, canola, there's a whole story about that, but I won't go into that. <laughs> the nuts, Brazil nuts, cashews, peanuts, pecans, tahini, and walnuts. Your beans, you got the black beans, chickpeas, those are um, acidic foods. Your dairy products, your beer. It's kind of hot out there, thinking about beer. Okay, some of the fruit, blueberries is acidic. Okay, but blue, even though blueberries are good. But that just kind of gives you an idea of some of the alkalizing foods versus alkaline foods. You've got the recipes that kind of show you some of the mixture. Um, I blog, my blog is out there. I'm putting out recipes all the time because I absolutely love to cook. The nuts have all been soaked with the congen water. Um, I want to thank Karen Choley, Karen Choley to be thanked for bringing me into the, um, just raising my ability to share. I'm a nutritionist and my passion is about food and empowering people to be healthy using their food. And in my ability to teach that, knowing what I now know about the conjure water and the magic machine has uh, lifted my ability to uh, share and teach others about, about the water. I was buying the water. Um, and then I started buying enough so that I could drink and cook with the water. And I said, okay, this is like getting kind of crazy. Right. And then once I 
got it. It's just been heaven ever since. So you definitely want to work on getting your machine. Good question to me, though. I did that to